What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Brothers Geek Out podcast. This is the last show of 2023. Two brothers, me and Kibbs, across the world, giving our thoughts on the pop culture world. Right now, we're not across the world. I'm in the UK, but we haven't <laughs> had a chance to align and do yeah. it side by side. But just giving our thoughts, thoughts and takes on the pop culture world, give you the news of what we found out this week, and then generally give you our thoughts on what's happening in the world um but yeah other than that it's the last show of the year i have to start off by always saying guys you do check the description if you don't want to hear what's going on in our lives and what our takes are on real world issues and whatnot feel free to check the description skip straight over this to go to where the geek out news starts i always pull it in the description so you can mm-hmm. skip all of this stuff and get straight to the geek out news and then secondly, I have to say thank you to everyone. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. Last year, this time last year, we set out a goal to double our subscribers on YouTube. We had 300 subscribers. Our goal was to double that throughout the year and get 600 subscribers. And we reached that goal this week. So thank mm-hmm. you, everyone. Really appreciate it. And that was done through, you know, hard work, being consistent with the podcast, being consistent with, um, you know, being trailer reactions and putting out shorts and clips uh kibler's doing have been doing a lot of work going to all the premieres uh and the screenings uh which sounds like fun but trust me it's, it's hard work um you know me just doing it when we done it aquaman just coming you know having your whole day working and whatnot and then going out there it trust me it's, it, it 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 sounds like fun but it's hard work uh kibler doing the interviews uh i've been trying my best like i said to to i've been um uploading the podcast creating shorts and stuff like that so i've been helping out a lot more as well so hard work pays off and we reached at 600 subscribers this on youtube uh this month uh just cut this week mm-hmm. doubled our subscriber absolutely amazing and i i think we i know we we talk about not knowing the numbers but i'm so happy that this organic growth uh based on the content that we like to to provide um you know achieve this goal you know i mean i think we should take a moment to celebrate the success of of that so i was just really happy about that i i I think our hard work paid off and it's great to have like i say organic subscribers and of course some people will fall off and which is great because if you subscribe to the channel and you realize this is not what i'm looking for it's good you should like unsubscribe uh because you go out there and get what you want um but for the subscribers who stay and do appreciate our content content and it is what you're looking for. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, listening, all the engagement and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're going to be here. I'm not setting any new goals for next year. I think we just keep carry on and do what we're doing. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, thanks again to everyone who subscribed and all the new subscribers. Welcome. And we hope to, uh, you know, provide you the content that, that you want. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, as always, you know, send the, pull it in the comments and everything like that. But on that note, Kibler, how you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm going to start doing this podcast standing up now. I feel like, uh, yeah, definitely. No sit-downs no more. Uh, but I'm always doing something, so I'm going to be clearing up a few things. I need to get some posts sorted out. Uh, we're going to come around later on. We are going to go for a munch later, which I'm looking forward to. Uh yeah, all good, bro. It's been a busy week. I know we couldn't align to to try and do this straight away, but I suppose we got a week off and so much to do around the house and stuff. But we've been we have been round, so it's good. You've got to see the kids and stuff. Uh, that's it, bro. I'm just prepping stuff for the new year, man. I'm I'm already writing my to do list, guys. Make sure you have your to do list. Can't see it, you won't see it, but you know things that you want to do, things you want to achieve, things you want to get. I think it's so important to write those things down. I'm a visual person. I know that everything that I write down and I, you know, if you, if you want it, then it will happen, but you've got to put the time in for it as well. But guys, like new things going on. Listen, guys, we've got a merch shop and something that we didn't push that much this year, but last night I updated it. There's new designs on there. The new logo as well, guys, is out. So on redbubble.com, type in the Brothers Geek Out podcast, you're able to get but the Brothers Geek Out merch. I'm going to work on that much more this year. 
you could get hats, t-shirts, notebooks, stickers, whatever you want. Basically, all that money. And the thing is, I want to start a Patreon page will help us invest in getting better quality video out to you guys. So we'll invest it in kit. So the money just doesn't go into our pocket. It goes out on kit so that you guys get a part of it. So basically what we, what I want to try and do is when we do the Patreon page is that you guys get credit on the show. You guys get uh, exclusive to the show as well. So, you know, episodes behind the scenes how to stuff like that i want to i want to work with the community much more because i know there's a lot of you that you that listen to us and over the past couple of months i've been getting messages on how you started this how you're doing it and first things first you've already got a mobile phone download whatever app you need to edit and the rest of it just record yourself that's the first part of it but yeah with your guys support you guys have got us to do some amazing things in 2023 and there's so many highlights uh which we'll cover in a bit but yeah consistency working on it sometimes yeah shit don't get me wrong I'm, I'm never in the mood for it or the rest of it but we do the best we can to, to to get the content out there for you guys to enjoy and I know we've got like a handful of people which are absolutely amazing I've got some great messages the other day from you guys as well so massive thank you for subscribing guys check out our big massive Shazam giveaway on our X page and you know follow those instructions I'll pick a winner on the first of January and uh yeah other than that all good bro just planning bro I'm planning I'm planning Sounds good, bro. Sounds good. Same here. I mean, <clears throat> I've got uh, things that I want to achieve in the next year. I, I don't believe in new, new Year's resolutions. I'm just like, no, let's exactly, just carry on yeah. doing what I'm doing. But yeah, just a couple goals and whatnot that I, I do want to achieve um, in the new year. So looking forward, looking forward to that. I've got, I think I got COVID. So I've been mm -hmm. feeling basics the whole last week. I've been feeling basic since D Dubai. And it was kind of up and down, up and down. And then I got here. And on Christmas Day, we went to a wedding and I came back and my body started shivering. I was like, oh, here we go. And um, before that, I had a mad cough. I was already sleeping downstairs and whatnot, away from people because I'm waking everyone up. But on that day specifically, I started getting the shivers. And then now I've lost my taste and smell. So I'm, I'm assuming it's COVID. I haven't taken a test. I don't like to throw that word around. I mean, COVID is COVID. It's a flu now. Mm. But I guess I got a variant of that because nothing has shut me down like covid did a couple years ago but uh, you know normal flu doesn't really shut me down like this but covid has um so i'm assuming it is anyway it's it's, it's a shame i haven't got my taste back as we're going out for dinner later i'm not gonna be able to taste anything any just feeling the texture of the food um mm. but yeah other than that it's been good to be home it's it's lovely to be home i've got you know this week's been a quiet week of work which is nice next week i've got the week off hopefully we can do uh, a session together um but if not at least at least i'll get a chance to see you anyway but um what else is going on yeah that's it i done a i done a geek out session with yusuf yesterday y2 2k uh we done a <laughs> game, game in one um with ash as well so we just geeked out about video games and stuff so do good, check good. that out that's on the channel uh, <clears throat> and that's it man what else is there i think that's it i think that's about it for my updates man um good 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 just in, just get rest in enjoy the time hopefully you I, you probably do uh Nia's is now ill i don't know what it is i'm not going to blame you for it. i think it's just a time bro but she's been off routine so that probably plays a big part to it as well yeah so, uh, I mean, other than that hopefully she's okay i thought that was my one concern with my cough and everything that bring him bringing it back but when i came back dad was ill i know some of the babies were already ill and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. But uh, it, yeah, it was a concern, you know, that I I, don't, I didn't want to, you know, make everyone sick. Um, cool, man. Well, look, it is the last one for the year, yes. and we are gonna go through like highlights or what. I haven't really thought about it, but I got a list here that I I want to go through of movies and TV shows, and we can give our quick thoughts of the movies and TV shorts that came off, or give shout outs, I guess, of movies and TV shows that came out this year that we enjoyed or whatnot. Uh, so we'll have to give our thoughts, otherwise we'll be here forever and everything. But we'll do that at the end, right? We'll do that at the end. Yeah, so I've uh, got like a top 10 movies. I didn't do TV shows. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get through it, bro. We'll get through it. All right, cool. I didn't even put a top 10 list together, to be honest with you. I, I failed. My, uh, yeah, 
I failed on that part. I didn't do my uh, my homework, put it that way. No, uh, no, let's sorry. Get... I mean, whatever we can do. Like, I mean, I think there's a, yeah, go for it. We'll go for it, bro. Yeah, let's 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 get started. You know, as always, uh, we, you know, something that we've been doing recently is is uh, the first segment, real world issues, uh, and and this one's gonna again. I keep saying it. If you want to skip and you don't want to hear what we got to say, check the description. Go straight to the Geek Out news. But again, free Palestine. Uh, mm -hmm. The brothers and sisters there need a lot of support. Loads of news. Again, I always keep saying, do your own research. If you want to believe the mainstream and the corporate news, so be it. If you want to believe alternative news like breaking points um, and some, uh, which I think is a good one, and some of the other alternative news, which I think gives a perspective on on a, a true perspective on on what's happening there. Uh, you got Al Jazeera and whatnot. Check it out. But then, but what what's going on there is is, is crazy. It's heartbreaking. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, but it, it's the same thing. But we can't stop talking about them, brothers and sisters. There, I know the terrorist state. Um, I don't know if I can say these words because this will get us in trouble. But you know. Uh, the Israeli prime minister is is literally saying that he's trying to work out ways to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian people off Gaza. So he's trying to make deals with Ga uh, Egypt and Jordan and whatever, trying to push them away so they can steal the land, basically. That's the goal. That's always been the ultimate goal. Uh, and he's basically, basically he's all saying, I mean, look, all the high-end officials there have been saying that we should just nuke them, we should do this, uh, get rid of them, ethnically cleanse them, we don't care about them. So all this bullshit about the civilian lives there that they care about is, is bullshit. High-end officials blatantly say they want genocides there, they want to kill them all, shift them off the land so they can steal the land. And the main prime minister said it himself, um, that Yahoo, um, that he wants to find ways to get them off the land so they can literally go in and steal the land, which is what always their goal has been. Now, you know, people might want to criticize the local Arab states and say, why don't you take them in and whatnot? First of all, that's their plan. That's what Israel want them to do. They want to get rid of them, right? Um, mm. So you're just eating into their plan. Secondly, the Palestinian people don't want to leave. That's their land. They don't want exactly. to leave. So stop, stop trying to blame other Arab lands, say, oh, they don't take them in. No, they don't want to leave. It's their land and they have the right to it. Um, and, and the world has to see it. The world is seeing it. I mean, the world is, except the US, basically, is seeing that. A genocide's going on and ethnically cleanse is going on. They're ethnically cleansing the people and they're trying to steal the land. That's it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, look, Yemen has been doing an amazing job. They're just being amazing. You know, um, they've really taken a stance and they haven't even hurt anyone. They're not even hurting anyone. They're just like, we're stopping any shipment that's going to Israel from the Red Sea. And that's dramatically impacted Israel's, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, economy. Um, I know the US is still sending weapons and shit over. I know a couple of countries have said, US, you can't fly over our airspace. But Yemen's done an impactful thing there. Malaysia said, no, Israeli ships are going to stop at their dock. So these are what these countries that need to do. They need to do this, man. Um, they need to make an impact uh, without war, but yeah. how you can impact them or whatnot. Uh, but pray for them, man. Pray for them. Donate, guys. We've got the channel and stuff. We've got the donation. Please donate. They're going to need donations forever. Uh, check out news, guys. Check out. I, I'm telling you channels now. I'm going to tell you right now which which if you're going to check out mainstream and corporate media, then so be it. But if you want to check out alternative news, check out breaking points. Right. Oh, continue. I'm just going to go toilet quickly. Yeah. Check out the channel. OK, cool. Check out the channel channel, the Young Turks. Um, you know, and if you want to learn history, check check Norman Finkenstein. Uh, check out Eli Elam. Eli Papa, Pape. Um, who else was there? There was another guy. Uh, Norman Finkstein, Eli Pape. Oh, there's another guy. I forgot his name. But I'll find it. But those are the ones, if you want to learn the history, the real history, then check those out. Don't listen to corporate media. Don't listen to, you know, even my guy, Joe Rogan, who I love and I've continued to listen to him. He's definitely had a lot more Zionist perspective than he has the other side perspective, the Palestinian perspective, which I think is, what can you do? I'm, I'm a fan of Joe Rogan. I'm always going to listen to him. Um, I do appreciate uh, all his content. I love the way he he expresses his content and whatnot. But in this case specifically, and, and I guess in general, it's other thing. You can't, you can't always agree 100% with someone, right? Uh -huh. um, so 
he, you know, he's had a bit more Zionist people on there as well. But he has had someone like Dave Smith, so check it out. He's had previous episodes with Abby Martin. Check that out. Abby Martin is another one you should check out. Uh, and also he's had a recent one with Tim Dillon, who talks uh, a bit more from the, uh, from the Palestinian side of what's going on. But anyway, I, I don't want to go too much into that because there's so much. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of, I, I just want to make sure that we always do speak about it because I, I don't think it's right if we don't. I thought like the corporate media, like I always say, is always going to take sides of the Israeli side and the American side, which they have an agenda. I think we take like it's important for the people to take side of the humanity side, right? That's it's not even sides, it's, it's humanity. Like be on the side of humanity. When people are dying, it's not a political thing, man. Political shit is like votes and who's in and who's out. This is human lives, babies' lives, children's lives on the line. So it's not political. It is literally human lives on the line. So I, I hate it when people say, oh, it's, it's a bit political. No, it's not. It's human lives on the line. Fuck politics right now. It's I think that's the, that's, that's, that's the problem uh, at the moment with the messaging on there. And look, Western media, uh, it's going to be difficult. They have an agenda. There's loads of things working in the in, in the background over there, but there's so much more to it, guys. And it's humanity. I think people have lost their humanity, and that's where people are crossing wires. Uh, there are some messaging that's coming out. And I don't know how this is still happening to this day, bro. You know what I mean? It's still happening to this day. So it's heartbreaking. Uh, guys, do what you can, man, please. I want to thank a lot of people actually you know what let me thank them now because we we didn't have a big goal on there bro but alhamdulillah these guys uh have uh donated to the cause and i just want to give a quick shout out uh where is it gone so we only had a target of 80 quid we're like 85 pound but we're still you guys can still donate the links in our social media bios we're going to have to help the people of Palestine for a long time, but I don't want them to lose their land. I want them to fight for their land because this is their land. And I think that's what people need to get straight. Yeah. They work together with as humans was fine. It's the higher ups that are causing more of the issues right now, but that's their land. That's their land, no matter what. And we've seen this shit happen throughout history. Yeah. A lot of people have lost their land. Yeah. We can't have this happening now. Not, not, not now. This it's just not right. So, late morning films. Rob, Yusuf, Y two K two K uh, Y K two K illustrator, uh, metal editor Sam Ibrahim. Thank you so much. You 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 smashed it. Uh, uh, Raheem, and there's a couple of other people on there. I can't get all the names out there, but thank you so much for donating, guys. The links are still in my bio. I've got loads of other stuff as well. Uh, to to help out and and some of the artwork that I want to give away to 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 get money donated for these for the people of Palestine uh for the people of Gaza for the people of West Bank uh we're we're with you you guys are in our duas and prayers uh it's a massive part and it's just about humanity guys it's not a religious war it's 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 about humanity it's not the political shit that they are pushing in the in the media uh, yeah uh. Thank you guys for yeah. for donating. It means the world. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. No, you you made you know, hundred percent. Thank you guys, man. And and like I said, from our perspectives, we're gonna keep doing what we can to help donate as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be um it, it's it's gonna be a long time. They're gonna need a lot of help. And the whole like I said, the whole world is with Palestine. The whole world can see it except the U.S. And there's an agenda there. It's not, and when I say the U.S., not the not the people of the U.S. It's the higher ups, which is which is fucked up that the world is controlled this way. Again, it's not a religious war. People need to see that. Even the Pope, the Pope himself, said it the other day that what's happening in Gaza is terrorism. Right? Um, there was Christians that were killed on Christmas Day. On Christmas Eve, there was a massacre. Their babies and stuff were being killed in Bethlehem. They're saying this, man. There's a lot of things been going around. Like, you know, if Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and this is what the, the Christian brothers and sisters believe, that he was born on the 25th of December. If he was born in Bethlehem, he might have been, you know, possibly murdered at this time. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? Hmm. And that's what the Christian brothers and sisters believe uh, when Jesus was born. Um, you know, so in, in, in Bethlehem, in, in, um, Jerusalem or whatnot, they, they didn't do a Christmas, Christmas celebration 
out of solidarity with the brothers and sisters in in Gaza or whatnot. Uh, but this goes to show. I mean, this, again, they blew up a church, man. A church. I think one of the. I think it was like a a church, like a seven hundred year old church or something like that, was blown up. I mean, again, this is not a religious war, and this is what they want you to think. It's got nothing to do with religion. It's all could got to do with colonialism and stealing the land and all this sort of stuff. Uh, the, the the Israelis higher ups, they're not even religious. That's just fact. No, they're, they're not religious. Not, they're, not, they're disrespecting they're religious, no. the religion of Judaism. Our Jewish brothers and sisters are, are shouting on top of their lungs that they're using our religion to do this massacre. They are not Jews. They were not following the religion of Judaism. Um, so people need to understand that as well, really get that out of everyone's head. It's not a religious war. It's basically colonizers, man. Simple as that. Um, man, all right, cool. Listen, we're going to go on about this forever. I can't help but watch the news about this. I have really, there's something that's really heartbreaking about this. Some of the stories you hear and whatnot. Some of the mainstream are speaking of things, but I just hope the world, the world is turning around, to be honest with you. The people I've spoken, the people are for Palestine. It's the higher ups, which is so crazy that these minor higher ups make the decisions that is leading no, to no, the it's such death a shame, but of people are speaking of other people. Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood, Hollywood starting to speak out. There are people that are a bit more vocal about it now. So, bro, it, it's it's slowly happening. The world is seeing what's happening. So inshallah, yeah, all well, we can do is just pray first, and, and, you know and do the is? best we can. Yeah, yeah, because at first you, for the longest time, you couldn't speak out. If you did, you were you were anti-Semitic. You were this. You would yeah. get cancelled or sort of shit. They, they've they've it's not anti-Semitic. They've rinsed that out, right? Because there is real anti-Semitic out there, and it's unfair that if if a Jewish brother and sister goes through real anti-Semitic, that it's been diluted with what they've put out there like oh, if you say if you're against israel you're anti-semitic if you're against zionist you're anti-semitic no like stop diluting real anti-semitic because that does exist and that's a horrible thing so stop trying to dilute that man um but yeah people are speaking out now i mean like they tried to cancel people uh they have canceled some people some people don't give a shit uh mm -hmm. there's a guy on instagram i can't remember his name his his channel recently got um sean uh, king censored sean, sean king, king. That's yeah, right. he yeah. was a big advocate for uh, you know, black brothers and sisters, and now the Palestinians and whatnot. I mean, we're against the world. Like when you was, we're against the technology, we're against the higher ups. I mean, fucking Facebook Meta, all them cunts and whatnot. You know, I'm trying to say, like, you guys are cunts. This is human lives that we're talking about, and you, you really just. But they, they obviously being um approached by the government to say censor this, censor that. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah, of course, bro, because it's it's, it's, it's it's gone. It went viral. It, it went viral. Those people out there, them journalists out there, the evidence is clearly shown in there where the other side haven't shown anything. Nothing. They're still living their lives like normal, bro. That's it. The fact, you know, like that, you know, the fact that they were shooting people from the church, some old women, they shot Sniper. three of their own people. Like, you know, I'm trying to work out the mental health aspects of those IDF soldiers that have been given these orders. And when all of this starts hitting out, bro, like, how do you live with yourself? Killing somebody in general is a head, but the fact that you've done that sort of level of, you know, them guys dropping the bombs. You know, there are some people that are still suffering from, you know, war because of things they've done that they were given for orders because they were protect. You know, they're patriotic, bro. They're protecting their country and the rest of it and the blah, blah. You keep forgetting about the human side of it. It's such a shame, bro. Such a shame. Yeah, they, listen, even like you know, there's there's videos out there, bro, and people can search it yourself of mm. schools in in Israel where they're teaching the kids on how to hate the Arabs, how to hate the Palestinians. Everyone in Palestine, including the babies and the children, are terrorists. That's what they're teaching the kids in Israel and their schools and whatnot. They're, so that's what I'm saying. They've been brainwashed since they were young. Uh, and that's unfortunate that you're doing that to children. You're doing that to kids in, in Israel, like those innocent children in Israel. You are literally brainwashing them to say that those people, they hate you and you should kill them anytime you have. That's why they have no conscience that some people are waking up. There's this I just posted it on my Instagram the other day. There's this I, there's this young kid in Israel who chose not to go to war. I'm going to try and find his name, who chose not to join the IDF. 
because he was against the genocide. This is a, a young man in in Tel Aviv, and um, let me find it, bro. And he they put him in prison for thirty days or something like that. What's his name? I got it here. I think. Oh no. Oh no, it's, it's off my stories now. Anyway, I pulled it on my stories yesterday. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There are people in Tel Aviv in in Israel that are against this, but. The majority of people, man, and that government have, have brainwashed a lot of people and whatnot. Um, man, again, you can't... What it is, I, I still believe this is like back in the days when, you know, when colonizers took over Australia, US and all that. Nobody knew. Nobody knew what was happening across the world, right? Because we didn't have internet and all this sort of stuff. Now, this final mission that they wanted to do, which they started 75 years ago, because of the technological advance of internet, and all the social media and stuff like that, they're not getting away with it as easy as they once did. And I feel like they've, because they're failing this mission, uh, because the world can see it now, I, I think that's what that's what's getting to them. They want to complete this last mission, but it's not going to be easy for them because the whole world is watching now. The whole world has access and the whole world is full of human beings. You know what I mean? Like we are all human exactly. beings. We have that emotion when we see ethnically cleansing, when we see a genocide and we can see it, social media, everything that's happening in Palestine. We don't see anything that's happening in, in Israel. That's how you know that the whole world has shifted. It's like you are lying. You've been lying for the longest time. And now we're seeing clear evidence because if there was happening stuff in Israel, and um, October the 7th did happen, and I'm not denying that, but a lot of shit has been debunked from that. The um, mm -hmm. amount of people died, IDF killing their own people, all this sort of stuff, right? Um, the whole world is seeing it, man. So that's, that's what I'm saying. The whole world's turned against them except the US and whatnot um so you can't get away with it you can't get away with it but i just don't know what can happen i just don't understand how one country like the u.s can just veto any decision of a ceasefire and people dying i mean i just don't get that shit you know even if yeah it's just blatant so i don't know how they'll face consequences i you know like i think their idea is like we'll do this and then the world will just forget and then that's it and they'll get what they want but the world can't forget the the global leaders need to hold them accountable um or need to take action not war action but stuff that yemen is doing stuff what malaysia did some of the south american countries and you know china said that we're ready to accept palestine as a state they've deleted mm -hmm. israel off them like all that sort of stuff world leaders big world leaders need to make a decision let's not escalate this further man israel's looking to go into lebanon and syria and 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 uh egypt or no man like why i don't understand why they don't stop it now to say look we don't let's not escalate this war we don't want iran to get involved i think the us want iran to get involved so they can go in there uh because I, I think they want that war with iran i've i've heard it a lot on mm. um joe rogan some guy was talking about mike baker was talking about they want iran to get they want iran to do one little thing so the us can turn around and say all right we're in right i don't know why they love war it's so crazy that they love killing people i kind of understand this but I just hope world leaders take actions, like I said, like Yemen and, those, and, and Malaysia and those countries to avoid war, but to stop the economy in these countries, to stop that, to affect the economy in the world. And then people can take action like in, in that sense, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. But uh, uh, I guess this, you know what? I, I'm not educated enough on talking about this, like real news and all that sort of stuff. I'm not trying to be a journalist or none of that shit here, but I guess I, I guess I want to use this platform to talk and express my thoughts about it because they're all running through my head as I watch the news or whatnot. And also it's important, bro. use the platform to kind of spread the message for anyone who does want to carry on listening to it and do think that, oh, maybe I should look into it a bit more um, or whatnot. But I just think it's important that we should never stop talking about it uh, and fuck what happens. Like, fuck the repercussions, man. Listen, I won't say nothing. I'll never advocate violence or anything like that. I don't want to lose my job because... You know, I work for the mainstream or whatnot, and I've seen the news that they publish, and it's definitely one-sided. Um, mm. All the war crimes that's happening in Gaza, they wouldn't, they, you know, they never post anything on it. They don't put any news on any of the war crimes that happen in Gaza, but they just uh, have the news just from the one side perspective, from the Israel side, which is, which again, I work for that, and I don't want to lose my job, but. I don't get involved with that conversation with anyone at work or anything like that. But this is my platform to to give me give my thoughts on it no, because exactly, it's constantly exactly. in my head.
exactly. Uh, I totally get you, bro. All right, man. I totally get you, man. But All yeah, right. guys, do what you can. Links in our description. Links are on our social media places, guys. Please do what you can to help the people of Gaza. We are doing our best. Uh, they are in our prayers. They are in our duas. Whatever I can do on this side. That's the main thing. I want to thank everybody who's donated. You guys are you guys are absolutely awesome. Uh, and 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 thank you, honestly. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Thank cool. you, guys. Keep donating. Have look, look, look like just just real quick. Be it donate our page, any other page. Just have like a monthly mm. sort of thing, even if it's a couple of quid, even if it's ten pound. Like based on your income, based on your net profit, based on how much you got left over, how much you want to spend for fun, how much you got to pay for bills, how much you want to save, how much, just have a little extra chunk there to like support uh, and, and and give to charity as well. Like just, just kind of work it out best. But again, please always do give a little something, even if it is a quid, it it, it means so much. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I'm still on real world, real world issues. Um, rest in peace, James McAfee, voice of Max Payne, who passed away at the age yes. of 64. Um, I'm not crazy familiar with him or not, but I am familiar with Max Payne. And I thought, you know, we were talking about that game not too long ago, I think, actually. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of give a shout out condolence to him and his family, to his family. And, um, you know, rest in peace, 64 is young uh, mm -hmm. these days, you know what I mean? So, yeah, condolences to his family. Um, no, definitely. Another piece of news, I thought this was interesting, which I put this down. I normally I normally don't put this stuff down, but I wanted to kind of put this down because I just thought it was, uh, I don't know, it was interesting. Javante Davis, bro, WBA lightweight champion. He's like one of the best boxers in the world, uh, 29 and all. He recently reverted to Islam, Alhamdulillah. Oh, Allah, yeah. um, but I just found that to be amazing. I mean, if you, <clears throat> I'm, I know, if you're not familiar with him or, or whatnot, he's, he's, he's Considered like one, of the, he beat Ryan Garcia recently. Uh, you might be familiar mm -hmm. with that name. Um, he's all tatted up. Not that means anything or whatnot. But obviously, I I just find it interesting. The reason why I find it interesting, and loads of people in the world revert to Islam. Mm -hmm. They find Christianity, Judaism, whatever it is, right? They find religion and everything, which is a beautiful thing, uh, regardless, right? And some people lose religion, unfortunately. But what I found interesting is some of these things, like him like an Andrew Tate and these sort of people is you're on top of the world. Javante Davis is on top of the world right now. Boxing like champion, boxing like one of the pound for pound greats up there, right? 29 and 0. All the mm. money, the women, the, the flashy things in the world. And it's interesting how that's just like, he knows like you come to a level where you just know that that's not enough. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. And what you're looking for is, religion and in this case islam and that's the peace that he found uh that he needed in his life could you imagine that you have everything and yeah it's like no that's not what i'm looking for you come to a realization when you that's not what i'm looking for i think mike tyson said that something about that himself as well it's like when he was on top of the world and he worshipped himself he would say he would think that he was the greatest he used to call himself like a god or whatnot and he came to realize that worshipping myself only takes you like certain level like there is mm -hmm. a higher being out there and, and to worship that is where it takes you to a level of of, of peace um but i just found that interesting i just wanted to kind of point that out i mean alhamdulillah to him may allah guide him um uh towards more success in regards to islam and knowledge so um yeah i wanted to, as we all know one of the greatest boxes of all times muhammad ali who reverted to islam a while back um you know it, it's just i don't know it's just uh i love to see people on top do better for themselves and when you say do better i'm talking about really find peace in in religion um and religion is love religion is peace um so anyway that was beautiful <coughs> all right let's move on to the next segment things we have watched rebel moon mm -hmm. I yes, watched Rebel bro. Moon with Ash the other day. So, um, you saw the screening on 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 cinema big screen. I yeah, saw so it listen, on Netflix. Yeah, go on, go on. Shout out to Paul for that one. That was an early birthday treat. So I watched it at the Prince Charles Cinema. Uh, they had special screenings that people could go watch in seventy mil. I really like that cinema, bro. Usually when you're in the cinema, you sit kind of down like this, right? And then the screens at the bottom. Mm. Prince Charles Cinema, 
the screen one downstairs goes up. So it goes like that. Ah, okay. Comfortable. Re really good. But yeah, listen, uh, let's hear your thoughts, you and Ash. So, Bo, I, I know it's getting slated and I just feel like Hollywood or someone just fucking hate Zack Snyder for some weird reason. I, bro, I enjoyed it. I did think, I, my only criticism is I did find it a bit long and boring. Not boring, sorry. Like, when I say boring, some scenes were like, oh, let's just get to the next scene, please. Um, but I did find it a bit long. But, you know, of it, and I think you said this and I said it, it, it reminds me of a, uh, a, a, um, a cosmic seven summarize, you know, um, Magnif Magnificent Seven, which is basically a simple storyline of a village or town is going to get attacked by some imperial force. And you're going around, in this case, the galaxy to find seven warriors or some warriors to help you fight against this uh, imperial army. So being a resistance fire and whatnot. And each of them have their own special skill set and whatnot. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I like that. So, you know, their special skill. It's like the Avengers. It's like a team coming together. They all have their specific skill set that they're masters of. And together, they can they can form a great team and fight against a rebellion and whatnot. Um, I know this was compared to like a Star Wars, uh, Snyder's version of Star Wars and stuff, which is, yeah, you could say so. Um, but again, I outside of it being a bit long and I'm feeling that like I shouldn't be too long because I know this is multiple parts and I love, I do respect Snyder for the fact that he loves his long form content, which he really likes to explain mm. things. Uh, I know he gets criticized for that. And I just, that's why I think he should really do start doing TV shows because he can really do long form shows. Um, but outside of that, I really, I enjoyed it and I love the visuals. I love that, that lady with the, the sabers that she had, the, the kind of, the, you know, mm. the sabers that she had. Uh, the visuals, the wide angle shots of just the scenery and whatnot. He's just amazing at that. Like, if there's anything you're going to take away from a Zack Snyder movie, is at least be be stunned by the visuals and the, and the vision that he's got when he's trying to express a uh, a, a canvas or uh, you know what's on the screen at that moment. It's just it's just amazing. Like that, you gotta love. Like, if you don't like the movie, if you find the movie shit for whatever reason. At least you could walk away and say what, well, you know, the visuals were amazing. You know, I mean, this character was amazing. I like the fighting scene. I like the co the combat. Uh, I like the slow motion that Zack Snyder likes to do. Um, so that's what I appreciate. I, like I said, man, I, I I liked it. I liked it. You know, I, I hope I wish you can shorten it down. But I, my criticism is like, I wish you just done a, a, a t I, mean, I wish you made it a show. And hmm. ep episode one, which we just came out. You could have made that a six episode show or whatnot. Take your time, make it longer. Then the season two would be part two of the movie. That's what my thing is. Like, other than making a long ass movie with loads of little bits, do a show. That's my only. I think it, that would have worked out much better. That would have worked out much better. Listen, I had a great time. I still enjoyed it. I know it's an exact, it's an exact copy of Seven Samurai and Magnificent Seven. You know what I mean? So. But it's a great story, you know. Stories have been told in so many different ways, bro. Listen, man, they're still doing it in religious books, bro. How many testaments have we got already? You know what I mean? So I think I think people forget creativity and showing visual styles. Uh I think there was a quote that came out where Christopher Nolan said that, you know, he's 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 kind of paved the way for science fiction and superhero movies because of his visual style. He's a he's a director that can put a comic book page. He's the only director who's done this. A comic book page, page by page, and done it on the big screen. You know what I mean? So I think people forget creativity uh, when they people forget to take themselves out of we're all critiques now. And uh, you know what I wanted to start the podcast with? Like I was thinking about a new intro. We're not film critiques. We didn't study film. We're just two fans that talk about films. And I think that's the important part of it. Fans. Yeah. I'm not I'm not one to give people advice on movie making and the rest of it. We're, we genuinely love the movie going experience. It's played a big part of our lives. And I think that's why we still enjoy when we get to see things like that. So like... I can say, you know what, the movie wasn't uh, scripted well, but I was entertained. I, I was, I, I, you know, it's the true 
story about what's happening now in our world right now, bro. Colonization and all of this shit, bro. You know what I mean? So it has its real world to it, but then it has its fantasy part to it, bro. The sets, the the the, the designs, the 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 look of it, the the fighting. Uh, it, it was good, bro. People keep keep complaining about this slow motion thing. And listen, each to their own. Uh, I think it expresses uh, a, a scene so much well when it comes to that's what you see in a comic book. That's 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 you know things are slowed down when Superman punches Doomsday in the face. We in reality we would never see it. In a comic book, you would see that punch on the screen you'd have to see that punch. So yes, slow-mo plays a big part of it. I think he does it really well, bro. It's his style and it works. Uh, good fun. I'm actually looking forward to number two. I think they they built, and we don't know too much about the characters. We know little bits about the characters, uh, but each of them carry their own pain that this empire has brought to them. And that's amazing. You know, people overcoming, it's it, people overcoming things that were taken away from them. and this is their chance to stand up for themselves. And I think the movie is about standing up for yourself. It's standing up for the right thing as well. Uh, yeah, good. Good movie, bro. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm invested and I'll definitely watch it. I'm invested in anything Snyder does. Hmm. I'm a, I'm a exactly. fan. And yeah, when same. you mentioned about those slow motion parts, I think you're right. I think when you're in the mix of action, there's some cool scenes that Snyder or other creators want to be like, I want you guys to just notice this one scene. Exactly. This came from a comic book show, which is be it an uppercut to Doomsday or whatever, as you mentioned, or the Dark Knight scene when he's on, like, just, hey, guys, just a quick slow motion for you to see. Look at this. Look at this. Like, mm -hmm. What's on the screen to appreciate this one little part. And I think that's important because when you're having fast paced action, you will miss a lot of it. Um, exactly. You know what I mean? So I I appreciate his style and whatnot. I, I just think my only criticism to him is uh, not criticism like I know shit. My only uh, uh, con constructive feedback is just do TV. I, I would say, please, your next project, please do a TV show so you can really express your vision and storytelling through a long form TV show. That will be perfect for Zack Snyder, in my opinion. <coughs> okay, moving on to the next thing, which I've been enjoying very much and I feel like it's brought back some excitement for me, like it hasn't in a while, is what if. Now, what if has been the best part of phase four, I think, because it's brought back excitement to the MCU or the excitement that I once felt about MCU within phase one, two, and three in this TV program. Now, I haven't seen all of it. I haven't caught up, bro. I think the last Same. one I saw was the Happy Hogan one. Um, oh, what wow. was after okay, so no, what I, was after uh, Happy Hogan? So what was after Happy uh, Hogan? Happy Hogan. Then you had Iron Man on... Iron Man, yes. That's the last and, uh, one. I, I haven't seen after that. And I saw the new one last night with Captain Carter. Anyway, the latest episode Captain Carter. Yeah. Let's not talk about that, but anything before that, I watched those before. But I have to say, uh, the first episode with Nebula gave me like Blade Runner vibes. That was also mm -hmm. a very detective sort of thing. That was cool. The second episode gave me goosebumps, like the old school Avengers coming together. You had yep. T'Challa's uh, father. What's his name? T'Chaka. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? King uh, T'Chaka. Yeah, you had Ant Man, uh, the original Ant Man, Hank Pym. You had uh, Giant Man in there. You have Thor. I miss this this Thor so much. This dummy that we got. No offense, but this dummy that we got in Love of Thunder. I I I don't like him. I miss this Thor that we had in Phase One to Three. Um, Peter Quill being a young young antagonist in this one. I get what well, almost like. Uh, he was being controlled by uh, his father or whatnot. I love that little story, man. I love the story between mm. Hank Pym, Peter Quill. Peter Quill lost his mother in yep. this episode. Hank, Hank, Hank Pym lost his wife. And there was just this relationship between father and son. It was just beautiful. Uh, but just bringing that Avengers team together was just so cool and so awesome. It gave me goosebumps, like the original Avengers. And then... Um, the Happy Hogan episode was so cool. Obviously, a homage mm -hmm. to Die Hard, which is exactly. a Christmas movie. Absolutely freaking hilarious and perfect. And then the last episode with Iron Man being on uh, Zatar uh, so was just joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was just hilarious, bro. I just, I, I just thought it was just a perfect. They're doing it great, man. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy that the way they they're doing these what ifs, man. They're so much more fun than uh, than the Phase Four movies that's been coming out. 
yeah listen bro i think they're creative they they're pulling inspiration from what they've already got and what they can do i think i don't know why they haven't done that in phase four but i'd rather them just continue animation the animation for me bro i love the animation bro it's so sweet uh it looks good and you can do so much more with it. So I'm happy with just cartoons all day long, bro, because you could say a story in a short uh, format and continue that hype. And that's what What If brings to me. You know, when you read the What If comic books, uh, what they've done with this TV show is actually quite interesting because they've merged them into something happening where in the comic books they don't actually interlink so they just one-off stories but what they've done here is really interesting because now it got it gets me hyped for what if because that last season was so good and bring that level to this season two uh is is great bro uh, a lot of people are not enjoying it still i don't know why but it depends what you're a fan of to be like you know I I loved it. I'm I'm loving last yesterday's episode was touching. That's all I can say. It's a touching episode. You know, uh, you got your fun. You got your you know um, you know the the when they brought the old Avengers together, that was amazing, bro. That episode too, like the bringing those characters together, was really good. Really good. Uh, I want more, bro. I think moving forward, Marvel need to start thinking about creativity on that level because. You know, we got X Men ninety seven coming out next year. Yeah, bro, they need to concentrate on that, man. They need to give us stuff like that. Forget. Yeah, I know they're gonna have a little bit of a break. We've only got what one or two movies coming out next year. Yeah, I think as far as I know, Deadpool and then a couple of the cartoons are coming out next yeah. year. Yeah, just just stick with it, man. Honestly, stick with that. That'd be good. Yeah, no, I cool. listen. I haven't felt this kind of excitement since like phase one, two, and three. And phase four, obviously, it's been a bit of a downer, even though <clears> we've been watching it. But I just haven't had that same excitement, um, hmm. e- even to rewatch something. I watched that, I watched that Happy Hogan episode twice because it was so much fun. Um, you know, what I mean, I haven't done that with a with an MCU movie in a while. Yeah. So, I I'm really enjoying it. I really enjoyed it. It's so much fun. I'm gonna try and catch up with, um, the the latest episodes, uh, today if I can. Uh, cool. All right. Well, that's what we've watched. Let's move on to the next segment. Uh, MCU. I just got one piece of news on that. They Marvel Studios are looking forward to move um moving forwards to making a Young Avengers movie. Okay. Now, if you cool. saw the end of, if you did see the Marvels, if you saw the end, there was an end credit scene or an end scene with Kamala Khan approaching Kate Bishop in a Nick Fury type of way, uh, talking about mm-hmm. building the Young Avengers. Now. You know, you're going to have them. You're going to have young Loki, apparently. You're going to have uh, the young Captain America. I don't know none of the names. Apologize. But the young Captain America from uh, from uh, Winter Soldier, Captain America Winter Soldier. You're going to have, uh, I think, Scarlet Witch's kids and whatnot. Okay. Listen, I'm going to watch it. That's all I can say. I have no thoughts about it. I saw some mm. funny memes that made me laugh that were saying mm-hmm. that, um, that were saying this is going to be the first marvel movie where marvel has to pay the audience back um uh, based on this movie that's how that's how much people have confidence in it <laughs> excuse me no <laughs> shit excuse me Kibler, you go i'm gonna die oh it's all right okay go for it uh listen uh i i'm looking forward to it man you know i'll watch it still bro it may be not connect to me as much and i think that's just because of age and you know, not age, but like just the, the type of content that I like now. Now, when you guys hear my highlights and, you know, my top 10 movies of this year, you guys are going to be shocked. You guys are going to be absolutely shocked, but only because I've saw much more different movies this year uh, and, and and creativity on a, a really good level where I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with this list. I, I never thought I'd be. So let's see what they bring out, bro. You know what I mean? Let's see what they bring out. We can only wait and see. Yeah, exactly. I I will watch it. Whether I'm going to enjoy it, I'm not going to predict that it's going to be crap, but I'll I'll watch it and see how it goes. Um, Oh, crap. What did I do? One second. Let's go on to the next segment before we finish up with the top 10 and uh, retro movie reviews. Uh, The next segment is other movie news. So just a quick one here. Scream Mm -hmm. 7, which we spoke about couple of weeks ago uh took another hit so the director christopher landon has quit 
and has an official response to the firing, uh, official response to the firing of Melissa Barrera, who Mm -hmm. got fired because she stood up for Palestine. She stood up for humanity Mm -hmm. and she got fired. So this is how much, you know, things are being controlled from that perspective. We won't go into it, but she got fired. Uh, And then after that, Jenna Ortega left because she was unhappy with um, her fight, the firing of Melissa. And then Christopher recently just said, my heart did break for everyone involved uh, in the project and 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 heartbreaking for her leaving and whatnot. Uh, and I guess it's, I, I mean, I, I read a little bit through, but I guess he was saying that um, this has been a conversation for a while. And when she got fired and, and, and Ortega left as well, he, I think he was on the verge of leaving as well. And it, I, I guess it just, it just happened now, basically. But as we know, the firing was, was, just because someone was sticking up for humanity. I mean, how crazy is that? You you stick up for peace in the world. You stick up for, you don't want genocide in the world. Uh, you don't want human beings and babies to die. And it's like, oh, you're fired. You're, you're speaking um, fucking, you're saying bad things. Okay, I don't want humans to die. That's a bad thing to say these days. That's how us the world that we're living in. Anyway, so Scream 7 lose. And I think, <laughs> you know what? First of all, I don't watch the Scream movies anyway. But if you're a fan of Scream, then whatever uh you know hopefully you'll get something else in the future but you know what shame mm. that's what you get for for being against humanity i don't want anyone to get cancelled don't get me wrong because there's a lot of people who would have got paid on the project project and there's a lot of actors yeah, yeah. and what I, I don't want nothing bad happening to them of course but you know um it is what it is and that movie just just lose but it's scream seven who gives a shit uh, all right, my bad. All right, <laughs> bro. There's guys. some scream fans that watch here, bro. There were, there were. I love you guys. I love you guys. You, you, you guys deserve um everything. Um, Kibbs, why don't you go? I failed. I didn't get my top ten ready. So why don't you go for your te- top ten? Um, and what of movies for the year? And I'll have a quick think about my ones as far as you do that. All right, cool. Listen, uh, this is purely movies that I've seen this year. Uh, purely going off my own thoughts and what I really enjoyed and what I absolutely loved and what really stuck with me over the past year. So number 10 was Gran Turismo. That movie really shocked us because remember before we went in, you know, we didn't we didn't even know this was based on a true life story, bro. It, it surprised me. It was a very underdog story. There are some things in the movie that are not perfect, but I, I had me at the edge of my seat. I thought it was a great film, uh, great soundtrack, great actors, uh, great, you know, visuals, bro. This is a PlayStation movie. This is a game movie, but it happened in real life. You know, I did not know that how realism of the game got somebody in, has become a racer, bro. That's insane, bro. So that really shocked me. That was That's the movie that kind of, shocked me this year that was actually really good because a lot of people kind of was like it's going to be rubbish so that was really good uh number nine teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem absolutely amazing great animation uh, i love the brotherhood in it i love the soundtrack i love the look of it uh, it's a creative movie and i absolutely adore it i love the characters i mean it probably one of the biggest casts in that film you know big cast uh, from Ice T, Paul Rudd, Seth Rogen, John Cena, it was massive, bro. Absolutely, such a fun, fun movie. And yeah, uh, creativity-wise, the the visuals for me blew me away, bro. Absolutely stunning. Number eight was Barbie, uh, a movie that I did not think I'd enjoy, but I, I absolutely did. It it. I remember I was in Birmingham at the time and I caught a late night screen and I thought, let me go watch this. Let's see what the hype's about. There is a lot to the movie. There's so much, you know, there's a silver lining to the film and 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 how it connects to reality. And I really enjoyed that part of it. And uh, Ryan Gosling stole the show, man. It's all about that Kennedy, bro. Uh, he, he bought it and the visuals, bro, it was directed so well. And it's, you know, the, the story of it is deep. You know what I mean? So I really enjoyed that. Will Ferrell, shout out to Will Ferrell. He always cracks me up. Uh, number seven was John Wick, bro. John Wick 4 a way to end the story. I don't think they should continue his story. I think it was beautifully done. It was a three hour masterpiece. Uh, I think what director has gone right in my head now. Uh, oh, blowing. Anyway, 
listen he he compare that movie from what it looked like the first one to what it looks like now cinematically number four is gorgeous bro it looked amazing and some of the choreography was amazing you know you're bringing something fresh every movie bro he bought every, he that they actually that team bought something fresh to every single movie and john wick Direct, smashed just to jump in director's name chad uh, yes yeah. i can't chad Sid- spell it <laughs> chad sadinsky yeah. uh who's looking to do the ghost of uh, tashima movie so which would which would be awesome but listen uh john wick four uh number six sound of freedom bro uh I, i've never had a movie where i sat down and had a lump in my throat all the way through. I mean, these are, this is a real life situation. This is a real life thing that happens. And beautiful movie, beautiful message. Uh, and I'm glad a lot of people got to see it. And they did a lot of things, man. A lot of things. That was my number six. And on my number five, uh, Adam Deacons and Jazzy Zonzolo, Jazzy Zonzolo, uh, Some Otherhood, which is a great comedy, a British comedy, a Britain urban comedy. Uh, I haven't laughed like that in ages in the cinema, bro. It's it's always hard. And I think it connected more because it was a, a UK project, I suppose. And and it's characters that we've seen before, but, you know, brought back again. And just stuff that we can relate to because it's stuff we grew up with. Uh, great laugh. Uh, if you guys haven't seen some Otherhood, check it out. It's a great, fun movie. Uh, and that's all it is. It's a fun movie. Uh, and that's all you know it didn't have to have a great script or what all the rest of it just the quality is better the comedy is better the it's it's more hype that it brings to it you know so some otherhood is my number five number four is Oppenheimer. so this four to one was a very hard one for me this morning because i was going through it and i was like does like like what i've picked does it work but anyway Oppenheimer, christopher nolan done it again three hour epic not even an epic three hour story about the struggle of somebody creating something that causes issues to the world to this day a chain reaction of shit you know what i mean uh listen man the, uh, an amazing movie i think what christopher nolan does is really puts you in the shoes of what people like that go through mentally uh, and with no cgi absolutely amazing all right man my top three this was so hard man Anyway, Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse. Probably one of the best movies of the year, to be honest. But it's at my number three. Bro, left us on such a cliffhanger. Absolutely amazing. The story of Miles Morales and doing things his own way. Uh, Absolutely beautiful. Miguel, Oscar Isaac plays a wicked Spider-Man 2099. And, you know, there's so much to the movie. You know what I mean? Number two. uh, This was a hard one. This one was a hard one because I think it was my number one is the creator. I think what uh, Gareth uh, Edwards did on this movie is absolutely amazing. It w- was original. It was amazing. Uh, it was beautiful storytelling. Uh, a lot of people give it hate. Anyway, I don't know why I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. When when you're sitting there and you're taken into a different world, the future, the future of AI, where it's going to head. And humanity, the way we are, we're, we're all about things that we don't understand, we end up destroying, uh, was 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 a beautiful story and a beautiful visual experience. And my last one, bro, uh, my number one, my number one, my number one. And I don't think anybody would class this as a movie. Uh, but I would say it was. It was a documentary style movie. Was uh, Michael J. Fox, a Michael J. Fox movie called Still uh i absolutely love that bro and i've seen it like three or four times this year the way it flows is unreal and it was a movie it wasn't uh it's a docu style movie but i would call it a movie that's the thing that brought brought me most joy uh this year watching uh uh, i know i'm already biased because i'm a big back to the future fan but i think hearing one struggle of you know suffering that type of disease and still being able to do the things that he loves and still appreciate his life the way it is, is 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 a, is a different level, bro. Whole different level. And the fact that he's still doing it now, uh, I give that guy kudos, man. Uh, that's it. That's my top 10, man. M- movies of 2023. Awesome, bro. It's a good list. Good list. I think I just quickly went through a list and just quickly compiled mine. And I think uh, some of the stuff that you said is on my list too. So I'll, I'll go with mine, man. I, I quickly put this together. Mine also based on what i enjoyed 
but what I was emotionally connected with. So my number one might also be, uh, was actually on your list, but it meant a lot to me as well emotionally. So number 10, I've actually got two movies. I'm going to put Tetris and Air on there. Okay, just cool. Because, just because both of them, right? Yeah. Really had me on the edge of my seat. They were both based on real life uh, stories. Tetris was the invention of Tetris. I had no idea that it was invented that when there was so much political stuff involved with Russia <laughs> or whatnot. And Air as well with Michael Michael Jordan and just mm -hmm. Nike taking a chance on him and, um, and what do you call it? Uh, just how smart and intelligent he was on the deal that he created and whatnot. So both of those films were just amazing and excited to watch. And it just kind of gave you an in, in an understanding of, of how those things were created. So I had to put them on number two because I didn't want to put one of them as number 11 and not mention it. So that's that. Cool. Two was Barbie. Uh, my number mm -hmm. nine was Barbie. Uh, again, as you mentioned, it was actually really enjoyable. Mm. Um, I, I just, it was an easy watch. It was enjoyable. It was fun. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of good looking people on the screen. Why not? Uh, but no, I, I, I generally think that it was fun and enjoyable and it did have an underlying message of, you know, men and women and all that sort of stuff. It was, it was quite fun. It was very enjoyable. I hope they don't make a part two because I think that, that will make this movie, I, in my opinion, a classic if you just left it alone. But let's see what they do with it. No, I don't think they should do. They should leave that as it is. That's, that's a, as you said, exactly a classic. Yeah, I think it could be in in the future. And it was, I think it was the number one gross highest movie of the year. I think so. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that so made some monies. Made big monies. Uh, all right. Number seven, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Mutant Mayhem. Agreed with you. I, it was so much fun. I love what the creators did with it. I love what the directors did with it. I, I love the animation. I love the fact that they, they sounded young. They were young. The cast was amazing. Jackie Chan mm. was just epic. It was just a, a very it was a, a very different take on on a very familiar group of heroes that we love. Um, and I hope they carry on more with this vision and, and the storytelling of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, the next one, number six for me. Was it number six? Shit. Uh, sorry, 10. Number six. So that was my number eight. Number seven for me was Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Uh, mm -hmm. This was my only Marvel. Oh, no, no. Another Marvel movie in there, but from the MCU, the only movie. Uh, obviously, Phase Four wasn't you know the best, but this this movie, as I said, I think James done a done James Gunn done a great job of making me feel emotional over a CGI raccoon. That's all I can say, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was very emotional about it, and I feel it was just a great send off for the Guardians of the Galaxy. I I really I was very watch. emotional. So for me, I put that in there. Excuse me, my number. But number six, a million miles away with um, uh, why have I gone blank, man? Uh, Michael Pennell. Michael Pennell, yes, yeah. another great movie, another true story, another inspirational <laughs> story. I love those sort of movies. They have, I don't know, they're very touching for me. I, I, I'm a sucker for those kind of movies where just, just an immigrant and and uh, and a Mexican immigrant just has a dream of being an astronaut and just the hard work he puts in, the failures, the overcoming the failures, the rejections, the non-stop rejections to get there. For me, it's a beautiful thing. I didn't know that there was this uh, young Mexican um, uh, astronaut. And not only did I not know, I didn't know the struggles he had to go through to get to that position. And I'm a sucker for those type of movies. I'm glad those movies exist um, because it gives me a bit of history and education. Whether it was 100% accurate, it doesn't matter. At least it gave me, I mean, sometimes it matters, but in, so if I wanted to do my own research, I could do. But what I'm saying is at least it educates me to be like, oh, yes, like that, that's the struggles he went through to get there. And that's inspiring for anyone. Uh, so I had to put that in there. Number five for me, John Wick. Everything that you said, bro, um, love the character. I'm emotionally invested mm -hmm. with the character. Keanu Reeves is just amazing. The choreographing, the martial arts, the gun through, the next level of action, they put this in there. Uh, he's almost like a superhero that that he is a superhero in that movie uh, and his superpower is that that the unwillingness of dying and, and just that punisher sort of vibe of like i'm going forward and whatnot yep. uh he has uh the human strength who has superhuman cardio and endurance <laughs> uh and whatnot i love it and i want to see more i love the choreographing of that and i do want to see more i know they're going to make more i didn't really re really like the show that they made i found it very boring but this specifically i i love i want to see more i know they're going to make more but this would have been a good end to john wick but if they're going to make more why not i'm going to watch it uh my number four the creator 
Mm-hmm. Again, repeating what you said, I I just found it amazing on uh, one from a visual perspective, two from yeah, just just how amazing how they made the AI so human, but also it had that underlining thing like if you watch a movie, the reason why the AI made a mistake and the nuclear bomb went off or whatnot, because it was actually a human error. No matter what, it's always humans. Like we always mm-hmm. make error. We're human. We're the ones who make the errors, but we end up shifting the, the blame to other people or other things that we've created. Oh, it was the robots fault. No, we made an error and whatnot. And then we just turn and make enemies of things that, um, you know, we turn and make enemies of things and whatnot. Uh, but anyway, the creator was very good and I, I love the way they, they they put that on the screen. Uh, number seven for me, uh, uh, sorry, what was that for me? Uh, six, number seven. Fuck's sakes, my top three. <laughs> my top three, sorry, number, bro. number three. Almost. Yeah. My oh. COVID's killing me or whatnot. Actually, that's an excuse. Oh. Top three, Oppenheimer as number three. I think anything that the director Nolan does is a spectacle. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a spectacle. He takes his time. He's very selective with his movies. And anything he does is a spectacle. And you've got to watch it on the big screen. And I thought this was a great movie to teach us a little bit about the history. I don't know what they've changed in the history. I'm sure they have. Uh, but... One thing it did express in it is the regrets. I mean, one, mm. I did have an element. I, I did feel a little bit of, you know, when they were putting the team together. And don't get me wrong, bro, dropping a nuclear bomb, I'm saying it straight, dropping a nuclear bomb on a, on a civilian population is terrorism. I'm, I don't give a fuck, right? Whatever you say, I'm, I'm saying it straight, right? But that's not the point. What I'm saying is when they, when they, with open hand, when he put his team together and whatnot, I did find that a little bit like the Avengers just finding different scientists who have specialities in different parts of science i thought that was amazing i had a good feeling about that and then the the, the last part of the movie which was the regret of what they just did um mm-hmm. and I, I just thought that was expressed really well on the book and he had had amazing scott uh, cast killian murphy just amazing uh mm-hmm. downey jr a whole lot there's so much people in this movie great movie anything that nolan does is a spectacle and it's always going to be great uh my number top two <laughs> This was a tough one for me, but I put Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse in there, repeating everything that you're saying again. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, they do it great. When they do these animations, They this there's just so much they can express. There's so much they could do on an animation than they can do in real life. Uh, this story was deep. Uh, it was funny. It was entertaining. There's not one part you'll get bored. Uh, would have been Spider-Man uh, to 20, 2099, with Oscar Isaac was just absolutely he's just so awesome they in this in these animations especially this one specifically an animation choice that they they pick and they've created they are able to express emotions with the background colors and the movements of the background mm-hmm. which I think is an extra element that they bring like that and they can that they can bring to these movies which I love about it uh, and that's what's so great about these movies and I can't wait to see what they do in the next one and the last one my top number one of this movie uh, number one choice of this year 2023 of top 10 movies for me and this was purely based on emotions was sound of freedom mm-hmm. i've been talking about okay, cool. we were talking about yeah. this movie for before it came out right and we were talking about how it was getting censored and all this sort of stuff and it wasn't being released and we kept talking about it until we watched it and the same thing from the beginning and it was that one scene in the beginning when they bust this pedophile and then his teammate quits and he says, I can't do this no more. And he asks, and this is the very beginning scene. And he asks the guy, how many pedophiles have we taken out? How many children have we saved? And the answer was zero. And from then the emotions in his eyes and the mission statement that changed in his head mm-hmm. of, I've busted all these pedophiles, but how many children have I saved? I haven't even busted any, saved any children. Bro, I had a lump in my throat. I was looking to cry the whole movie. I was also excited and looking for this whole revenge, punish the story sort of thing, even though it wasn't because I wanted to kill these, I wanted them to kill these motherfuckers. Um, but obviously I don't know nothing about strategic um extractions or whatnot. But this movie emotionally, before it even came out and when I heard about it, was was on my head, on my radar. When I watched it, the feelings and whatnot I had throughout the movie. Um, was just absolutely amazing. I still think it's a gr- it's, it's a message that shouldn't be forgotten. 
which is what happens. But there are these things happening. We do, and then the world do does need to come together to save these children. I'm just saying, like you know, children dying in 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 Gaza. We're talking about you know, there's children being kidnapped and using as as sex slaves, which is absolutely disgusting. So not only was the movie amazing and it really captured the emotions and it really made me feel it's an important message to the world that this shit is happening. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. I had to put that as number one because I think throughout the whole year, that's the one movie that kept ha had me very emotional before the movie even came out and when the movie came out. So that's my number one. That's my top 10 for 2023. No, same. Uh, well, that's good, man. Uh, it's a great film. I'm glad the message got out there. Glad the film's out there. Uh, it's one of those important movies, bro. One of the important movies. I had a few honorable mentions. That I didn't pop up on there. So Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which you spoke about, which was really good. It didn't make probably the best Marvel movie that came out in 2023, but it didn't make the list. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1 was absolutely awesome. I had a thoroughly good time with that. And The Covenant, The Covenant, The Covenant with Jake Gyllenhaal uh, about saving a soldier, which saved his life in Afghanistan, which was absolutely amazing. A Guy Ritchie movie. Extraction 2, Chris Hemsworth. Brings the pain. Love it. Absolutely awesome. Uh, still love the first one because it's based in our hometown, even though they shot it in Thailand. Uh, and Blue Beetle. Shout out to Blue Beetle. I think that was absolutely amazing, fun movie. Uh, probably one of the best of DC's movies. That, well, one of the best. You know what? Hold up, man. I still enjoyed The Flash. Sorry, man. The Flash and Blue Beetle. Shout out to them. I love, I really enjoyed them. Uh, really good. Uh, so that was an honourable mention, bro. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned those because those I would say those are honourable mentions for me too. Um, cool, man. Well, look, uh, hold on. Give me a quick second. I'm just going to quickly run through some TV shows. Let's see if there was anything worth mentioning on TV shows because I know there were, but there's so many, man. Last of Us, I'm going to quickly run through honourable mentions, not top tens or anything. Last of Us, brilliant TV show. This came out this year. Ahsoka, of course, that was amazing. Um, I enjoyed Beef. If you remember watching that, that was pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, Gen V was fun. If you're interested in the whole uh, boys universe, Loki season two, absolutely amazing. That one was uh, Black Mirror. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but that Black Mirror I know was good. Um, I didn't Continental. I didn't like. Um, quick, quick, quick. Let me just scroll through, scroll through, scroll through. I know there's loads of TV shows. There's too much, and I'm sure we'll mention stuff that we won't mention stuff that. Um, people might have enjoyed really quick going through going through what else is there man damn they bang it one piece was pretty good one piece was good what if what if we up. mentioned what if as well bloody hell <laughs> uh, what if bro what if uh oh. i don't want to mention that one uh duh, 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 duh. keep going keep going keep going i'm just going through a list guys i'm sorry i'm just going to mention it should have been more prepared but i apologize um hijack no uh no 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 oh damn hijack was good bro <laughs> was that good yeah okay very okay. very very good all right cool invincible that was good uh, yes that, i mean we're on mid-season finale so that was really good I enjoyed Secret Invasion. Just my opinion. Mm, yeah, it was okay at the beginning. I think the ending was. Um, the the um the bear season two. Love that. I'm a big fan of that show. I, I need it. to. I need to. I need to watch that. I episode. really. I, I really watched the first episode, so I need to to catch up on that. I I, I really enjoyed. That's one of my favorites. Um. Oh, what else is there? All right. You know what? I'm not going to go through. That was it. I went through a quick list. Those are the ones I quickly wanted to mention. Let me just see if there's anything on this page. Sorry, guys. I know this might not be the most entertaining, but um, it's what happens when you're not prepared. No. All right. You know what? I think that's it. You know, I think those are the ones to mention. Twisted Metal was kind of fun. Uh, I kind of generally enjoy that. Love Death and Robots. Those are only always fun, short little animations uh, and great creativity and whatnot. All right, I think 
I think that we should move on to our last segment. Yeah, that was it. All right, guys, that was it. Uh, our top tens and honorable mentions and TV shows for 2023. Let's go on to the last segment, which is uh, one we've been doing for a while, which is retro movie review. And this week it's going to be In a Space, 1987, uh, directed by Joe Dante. It's got Dennis Quaid in it, Martin Short. You got Meg Ryan. Um, bro, I reason why I want to pick this one because I watched it recently, and I always want to take a get a get a uh, a, a, a what you call it, man, a recent take on the movie. Um, mm -hmm. I know we watched these movies long time ago and whatnot, uh, but to give a to give a nice review on it and thoughts on it is always best to watch it again. As, and that's what I really want to do, like as a homework sort of thing. When we pick a movie, I want to try and watch it again throughout the week just to kind of pick on it and just give my thoughts on it. Now, again, another classic, great movie, almost like Ant-Man or something from back in the days or whatever, um, scientific movie of, of nanotechnology and uh, I think the idea was to um, to uh, kill diseases within the body, right? Shrink someone to put them within the body so they can kill diseases and stuff like that. So you're talking about the uh, advancements of, of medicine and technology and whatnot uh, within the human body. But obviously you have a, you know, bad guys who want to use that for weaponry and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what I found was um, amazing about this movie, the soundtrack was good. You got, uh, was it Sam Cooke? Uh, Sam Cook, bro, yeah. Sam Cook soundtrack. Dennis Quaid is hilarious. Meg Ryan, young Meg Ryan, is absolutely stunning in this movie. Martin Short is hilarious in this movie. Um, yeah, and and what made me laugh? There was always things that made me laugh, and I was like, you know, this this is again. I'm just picking on it, just just as as a fan and as as someone who enjoyed it. Is Dennis Quaid when he was inside Martin Short's body, he was making bare incisions, bro cutting this and cutting that i'm like you're killing this dude from the inside bro like i know you're supposed to be so tiny but i swear a little incision in some artery or something would have made him lose and uh, he was cutting them up bare times inside which, which <laughs> made me laugh bro man i was like this is so like again it's a movie i'm enjoying it for what it is but i had to pick on it i thought this is hilarious but he's killing him from the inside but a uh, great movie man great great classic movie with with, with them guys what, what's your thoughts on it bro no, listen, bro. I think it's an amazing movie. It's one of it's one of my favorite movies of all time, bro. Like you know, in in that era of movie magic and that era of the eighties. I mean, when did this come out? In a space eighty seven, nineteen eighty seven. So, bro, there's some great films that came out. Uh, it's the it's it's the cut. It's the great ensemble uh, of cast as well, which play a big part to it as well, bro. Uh, and you took this is like fantasy and science fiction. At such a comedic level, but really good as well, bro. Like it's a movie that has rewatchability, an amazing soundtrack by Sam Cooke. Uh, and there are some great moments in that film, you know, friendship, love, uh, you know, again, the 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 what you're using that technology for, you know, the good and bad side of it as well. You know, they 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 want to do good things with it you got the bad guys that want to do bad things with it. You know what I mean? But it's a great adventure, bro. And 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 it, as a kid, it made me, you know, movies teach you, teach you stuff. And, you know, like when he got injected in the ass and he was like, these are bum cells. Like, how does that, how do you, you like, did they do their research on it? I still don't even know if it's the truth still, you know what I mean? But it made me feel like, right, man, is that in my ass? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, stuff yeah. like that, the little things that weren't happening. Does it that look, really in the look body. like that in your body? Yeah, yeah, and then the stomach acids. You know, when my guy, the bad guy, if you haven't seen it, spoilers, he dropped the thing in there, lose. Like, would that really happen? And how is our... St I remember I used to think, if there's acid in my stomach, how is it protected? Like, is it going to just leak out of my stomach one day or something? Like, you know, it, it, it questioned. It made me question stuff. Uh, and I think that's... That's one of the great things about a movie like that. I mean, Martin Shaw is at the peak of his career here because you had, you know, you had the three amigos, you had, you know, the three th fugitives, which is another amazing movie. And then you've got Inner Space. Uh, and I, I think those are like movies. This this movie here I cherish because that's my childhood in there as well, because you gave me action, you gave me great comedy, you gave me great suspense, thriller you know, science fiction, everything all in one. It's basically a movie with everything all in it, bro. Exactly. And you don't get that now, because now if you try and do that, 
it's too convoluted and you know the film critics would kill it basically uh yeah but I as mean, a fan you... yeah and if you think about the movie it was very uh it was very simply put i mean like a movie yeah. these days if you was to do something like that you would they would have to go into the details of technology and all this sort of stuff and complicate it too much. You don't but, need to do that. I think that's yeah. what we, we suffer now is yeah. that you're telling me too much. It's like the origins of, you know, fucking David, the flute playing android, created Xenomorphs. Let it go. To this bro, day, it will go. really bother me, bro. Convenant, Prometheus. I don't need to know the origins because personally, the mystery gave me that, hey, shit, I want to see more of this. You know what I mean? The mystery of not knowing where they came from. Same thing with the Predator. I don't need to know where he came from. I'm just happy he's here, man, and fucking shit up. <laughs> I don't need to know no origins and the intricate designs of why this fucking being was created or where which planet he came from. I don't care. I just know that he's an interesting character. Then There's mystery there. And I think that's what movies back then had was mystery. I swear we saw something... That other day. jingle all the way, bro. We saw that the other day, yeah. The movie is so bad but so good. It's so cheese but so good. I I actually thought about a story about Turbo Man, <clears throat> and doing something like that. I'm gonna do a sketch later on, and I'll I'll, I'll do it as something. But bro, the way it ended left me in mystery because I want to know what happened next, man. My guy was in the turbo suit. He gets carried away by people. Lock off. Film's finished. Same thing with Karate Kid. You know, he gave the nod, lock off, film finish. What happened after, man? I want to know. It's There's a, a a question that a movie asks you, and I think Christopher Nolan did it with some uh, with Inception. You know, you left it to an open ending. You could think whatever you want happened. You know what I mean? And these movies had that. You know, I mean, Inner Space had a happy ending, but hold up. He had the chip on his thing. You had the two little people still there hiding. Open ending. Exactly. I mean, this is what I, this is what, as I'm saying. We spoke about this when we talked about Big Trouble in China. Like all those movies, you're gonna always hear us say. Actually, when you watch it now, it's cheesy. But again, you're looking at it from a 2023 eyeball to mm-hmm. a 1985. You look at, it, you're gonna say, oh, it was cheesy. It was this and that. But they were all great. Like all of them gave you character building. All of them made you love the characters. And by the end of the movie, with an open ending question, you're like, oh, I want to know more. Like, what do you mean that? That's it. Um, you know, with this one, it started off with Dennis Quaid being, I think it was an Air Force pilot or whatnot. He was drunk, obviously, he was going for some PTSD and all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, which mm-hmm. is why they were calling him a disgrace of the force, if I remember correctly. And then um, he just wanted to be on a mission again. I think he just wanted to be on another mission, which is why he was picked for this for this mission to go inside. Uh, I think they would have put him in a goat first or something, or a rabbit or something like that uh, to do for the Oh, it was supposed mission. to be a rabbit. Yeah, it was supposed to be a rabbit. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I mean... It's so weird that those old movies can build character in an hour and a half movie, ninety minute movie. They could build a character build and then make you love the characters, um, and and then just end it in that way. It was just short and sweet. It was just so it was so good. I mean, they didn't go really too much into the technology. And you look at the technology back then with their eight bit computers and whatnot. You're just laughing, man. But it was just it's still it's still like just goes to show how advanced that they were thinking. Or they were thinking about this back in the days, you know what I mean? And they really wanted this. And this technology might be working now or whatnot. They might be working on the same technology now. Uh, these are type of movies that I don't think they should ever remake. Uh, they're fun. No, they're enjoyable. No, never. Great characters. There's nothing too hard at looking at it. Even when he changes his face and all that sort of stuff. Like, it just it just makes me laugh about how the hell did you change the structure of his face from the inside of his body, all that sort of stuff. Even when he's like, I need a drink. Drink it down for me and I'll take some. It's like, bro, that just went through his saliva and his guts and you're just going to pick it up and drink. Like, all these things are making me laugh. And like, I was also thinking, what if he takes a piss? Or what if he takes a shit? Are you just going to be there, like, listening to him? Or would you flow out with the poo? I don't know. All these thoughts were one for your head. Flow anyway, out with the it's poo, a movie. <laughs> you don't need to, uh, you know, to... I, I, say if he accidentally went into his indes- in, uh, intestines, he's like, ah, shit, I, I'm tangled up in your doo doo. Um, but no. Help me. <laughs> These are just funny thoughts that come into the into mind with, within the movie that you know it, it's just I I think I think um th- these are I don't know these type of movies man it's so weird that they're what rewatchable it's not weird but they've made them so rewatchable that I could pick it up nineteen eighty seven like thirty years later almost and be like that's still a great movie and that soundtrack makes me feel good and those little scenes that they had make me feel good and whatnot uh, 
you know, it's rare that movies can do that now, but maybe in 20 years time, we're going to pick up a movie from now or 30 years time, we're going to pick up a movie from now. A, a perfect example for me, Avengers Endgame. I know there's going to be scenes in that movie that's going to give me goosebumps 30 years from now and stuff like that. Uh, so mm. there will be some movies or whatnot. So, you know, um, I, I, I just, I, yeah, really enjoyable. I mean, what happened to Dennis Quaid after? Like, he, he done Dragons Forever. He's done, he's done, he's Not done Dragons he's... Forever, uh, Dragonheart. Um, he's done loads of other stuff, bro. He was in stuff. Stray recently, which I was, which yeah. I was made, made me laugh. Um, yeah, no, I, oh man, such a fun, great movie, man. I love those old 80, 80s movies. I'm glad we're doing this retro movie thing because it brings back so much joy of of movies that we we watched and just kind of have a new take on it. Um, I think we're always gonna love it, but it'll be it's fun to just kind of think of it and trying to uh, you know, just think of silly things about it. Uh, but. I think that's a great way to look at a movie uh, when you're looking back at it. I don't think it's worth, I, you know, I would hate to go back and like look at it and I'd be like, oh, that movie's shit. It's like, no, like you have to look at it from 1985's perspective or 1987's perspective and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, no, great movie, man. In a space, freaking hell. Guys, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Fun movie, um, enjoyable, great story, great love story, great friendship story. You know, uh, great technology movie, advancing technology mm -hmm. movie. So much to it, man. No, exactly, bro. Uh, awesome movie. I, I, It's one of my favourites, bro. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. All right. <clears throat> cool. Well, look, on that note, we're done for the year. Um, yeah, we're done, guys. Happy New Year. Thanks, yes, everyone, happy New year, again, guys. for subscribing, liking. Thanks for all the love that we've been getting this year. We're going to carry on doing our thing for next year uh, or forever, should I say, there is no just next year. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing forever. Um, if you, you know, again, appreciate everyone. Appreciate everyone. Kibler, I hand it over to you to uh, sign us off for the year. Yeah, listen, guys, uh, it's been a extremely busy, busy year. And I can't thank you guys enough for the support on the channel as well and on the social media platforms. But just in general, I met a lot of you in person, which was absolutely amazing. So shout outs to TS Villa, shout outs to uh, actually Rob and Michael. You know, we connected this year properly a lot more as well. Remember, guys, the link for Punching Bag is in the description, guys. A film that was inspired by our podcast. That's insane, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys have shown us so much love. It's unbelievable. I'm working on a massive project next year as well, which I'm a part of, which is insane. I, I can only say it's something super coming uh, and I'm really excited for the plans and the way we do things next year as well. I think it's important that, as I said, you write your list down for 2024, do what you want to do. I'm not doing no new year. I don't never, I've never done a new year's resolution. I don't even have that thought process. I just do. So if there's anything I can give back to you guys and help, I know I'm going to do some new stuff on the channel as well. Just give us a shout. You know, that's the main thing. Shout out to us. Say Kibbs or Gilman, we want to try something or ask for new content or something that you're interested in that we've never spoken about. L let us know. But always, thank you for the love. So make sure you check us out on our social media journey, X, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and on YouTube as well, because there's a community on here as well. So, guys, massive thank you again, and have a, a, an awesome start to the new year. And I can only wish you the best. There's been a lot of ups and downs. It's not been an easy one. It's been hard. It has been really hard. But keep going, honestly. Keep pushing. There's a reason. There's a reason. Uh, that's all I can say. There's always a reason. So, yeah. There's a big sign up, bro. What's happening? <laughs> All right, we're out. On that note, guys, we out. Peace. Peace.